The realm of Angli is a land full of goblins and humans, wizards and elves. If you're enjoying the podcast, please give us a five-star rating if you can, and tell your friends so that they listen to the podcast too. With enough listeners, I can get some sponsorships and maybe not be a starving artist anymore. (sighs) Anyway, on with the show. As Thendil continues to remember her past, we come to the part where the Elven Queen has died and her king is on the brink of true death. This doesn't look good. Thendil was called in to see him, so as we begin this next episode, she's on her way there right now. Chapter 2 The King's Heart King Elinduil's palace was woven deep among the trees. It was kept hidden from both elves and humankind for reasons only the king himself knew. He came to this forested place from a clan that loved oceans and stars. He gathered the power of starlight to protect the woodland kingdom. With the king in his failing state, his magics were slowly seeping away, leaving his lands and the elven kin who lived there unprotected. Thendil could see enchantments radiating like bright fog throughout the forest. Mist drifted away from her as she walked forward into it. Three tiny creatures, likened to wild hares, skittered in the shadows of the underbrush unnoticed. They seemed to be following along. Thendil's eyes were on the king's guard. Their gilded armor could be seen patrolling throughout the trees, where previously they would have been kept invisible to outsiders. Two of the guards saw her and solemnly ushered her to a hidden opening through the trees. As Thendiel entered the main gate, the forest opened up to an expansive stone bridge that looked as though it was more for presentation than practical use. The structure was set into a field with no river to be found. It was wide enough for two carriages abreast or a large garrison of horses. It spanned the last thirty yards to the entryway of the palace. Thendiel had never seen handcrafting such as this before. She noticed intricate vine patterns carved on the sides as she ran her hand along the length of it. Ornate and beautifully kept, the bridge looked as though it were hewn from a single piece of ivory quartz. The purpose of the construct came clear as it directed her forward in plain sight towards the tall, pale green doors that would bring her into the palace. The gatekeepers politely welcomed Thendiel and escorted her directly to the king. Thendiel was terrified as she entered the king's bedroom chamber. She was suddenly surrounded by his council of closest advisors and family. 
They had gathered to watch. Thendiel took a deep breath and focused on the one who lay death-like on the pillows. All eyes riveted on her as she drew near. She saw a vision of a heart as it drifted away through the veil of the king's fading life. The queen has met with a true death, she said at the sight of it. Some of the officials gasped, indignant at her brash announcement. They already knew her death was the reason for his affliction. The king and queen were heart-bound, she quickly added, changing the tone in the room. With a determined look in her eyes, Thendiel gently began to sing a simple magic. She was determined to remind the king of a life that he still had with his son and daughter. Filled with grief and fear, everyone moved in closer and knelt down to hum gentle harmonies. They held renewed hope that Thendiel would be able to reach his dying ears. The king's unmoving face continued to drain of life. Thendiel knew she had to hold on to him before he was too far gone. She knelt down next to her king. Taking up his hand, she wove their fingers into a firm grip. Closing her eyes, her mind filled with words she had learned as an elfling. It was a power older than time itself that she dared bring into existence. The air moved in thick around her, surrounding them with bright light as the strains of her voice increased. In the moments that followed, the room chilled as a death-like hush fell over the crowd. Everyone was frozen in place as the spell burst and shimmered out like an exploding golden bubble. Thendiel heard the distinct muffled pop as the air gelled, signaling she had entered the spirit realm. Outside the king's chamber doors, the sounds of hopeful prayer sung by tens of thousands of Glyneth voices continued to rise up throughout the whole palace. It flooded out into the land. Elves, gathered in solemn vigil, filled the palace throne room and beyond with candlelights and tears. Rovash, sat on his bed next to his open window, looking out over the treetops. A slight breeze carried the sound of the music up out of the forest. The day was ending, and the coolness of the evening made his cheeks turn a ruddy color that matched his swollen red eyes. Roe rubbed his tired face with his small hand, Feeling a weary heaviness in his head, he set his chin down on his folded arms and lay halfway out on the windowsill, listening to the strains of the song. A tear ran out over his wet cheek as he fell asleep. Thendiel had magically clasped the king's hand firmly into her own. She would not lose him to death no matter what happened. Once crossed over into the spirit plane, she could clearly see the deep lines of grief moving on the king's stricken face. He struggled against the pain he felt in the mortal realm. 
They floated free in a state of nothingness as she continued voicing her ancient magics. As their life or death debate continued, she fought with and against the king's spirit. Suddenly, off in the distance, an ominous swirling abyss appeared. Thendil thought she might have convinced the king to return, but the boiling darkness crept closer. Time! I need more time! Thendil's mind screamed as the chaos caught them. Nothing she knew could have prepared her for this thing, they had been swallowed up into. Sorrow filled her heart as she realized their inevitable end and the failure of the ones who had promised to protect her. Thendil's hope may have faded, but her voice remained steady. She was determined to protect them both for as long as she could. To Thendil's horror, she watched the edges of their bodies start to erode. Like sand in a windstorm, they began to sift away into the churning chaos. Suddenly, as in a dream, a thick thread of bluish white came streaking across the void towards them, The light snaked through the growing darkness with only one purpose. They were fading fast in the agony of the storm. When the thrum of its blazing hot glare hit hard, it coiled itself around Thendil's writhing body, filling her with radiance, holding her firmly in its control. Thendiel's song tore out of her lungs like the bursting of the first ripe green bud on the frozen branch. The searing pain and sudden force of it renewed the energy that surrounded them. They were thrust forth violently, rippling with new life in a shimmering stream that was unable to be ignored as every living cell shattered, mingled, and reformed. Together, they were born away from the chaos. King Elinduil and Thendil found themselves standing on a quiet path. Still clutching the king's hand, she led him forward towards a calm, glowing light. When they stepped into the healing brilliance at the end of the path, they saw a beating heart hovering alone on a strange font. The pedestal was made up of running water, flowing steadily up from the floor. Realizing she had freed him from the pain of his grief, King Elinduil could only watch in curious silence as Thendil let go of his hand. Knowing what to do, she picked up the warm, beating heart. It radiated a soft, golden glow in her hands. In that moment, Elinduil thought he had never seen anyone so beautiful as this one who was his rescuer. Their eyes riveted into one another as she moved in close enough to press the golden light gently into his bare chest.
As the heart welded back into its place, the king's eyes opened wide, gasping awake in his bed. Thendil and the assembly that was crowded into the chambers melted out of their magical sleep as the king came back to life. Still tightly holding his hand from the ordeal, Thendil collapsed on the king's bed from the stresses on her body. The others gasped in amazement at Thendil's transformation. Her long golden red hair was now silvery white, and her skin had turned pale as frosted glass. Unable to do anything more or less, Elinduil put his arms around her and pulled her body close to himself. They curled up into a deep healing slumber as the attendants looked on. It is well known that King Elinduil had survived through many ages and wars among the realms of elves and men. In his long memory, he had never met one so strong as this elder hiss who had given him back his heart. He was also a seer of long sight. He was puzzled because where she was concerned, he saw no past or future, and yet here she was. Thendil had gone into the void of the gods and brought them back. It was a place where the living were not allowed to go. The entire kingdom would have been lost to oblivion but for the strength of her song they had survived. In his mind, he was not sure whether his continued existence in this age was sound wisdom, for he had already lived so many long ages. As time and healing continued, Elinduil still felt the loss of his beloved queen, but he was able to endure the ebbing pain of it. For some reason, I am made to remain in this realm, the king pondered as he continued to convalesce. Wow, do you realize the wizards taught an elfling how to open a portal into the realm of their gods? Who were those guys? And what did King Elinduil mean by he saw no past or future concerning Thendil? You'll just have to wait to find out and come back next time, right? Elvish Lesson of the Day Today we learn how to recognize somebody by saying Isten u Nifden Isten u Nifden I know your face There you go Now you can tell all your friends If you enjoyed the stories of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Golden Compass, or The Hobbit, you certainly will enjoy this book trilogy. Tales of Eldalorn Book 1 will be available for purchase after November 1st. You can find it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Powell's, and any quality bookstore all throughout the world. Hey, it's coming out just in time for holiday gift-giving.